Philip, Jan, and Alex were good friends who spent their summer days playing in the woods behind their homes and in an old ballpark which had now been long overgrown with vegetation. One of their favorite games was hide-and-seek. Their games often took hours because there were so many great places to hide in the now decaying park. So many, in fact, that often the players had to come out of their hiding places before it got dark. This day, however, only Philip and Alex showed up at the field. Where is Jan? asked Philip. I don't know, said Alex. The boys walked to Jan's house to see what was keeping her. What's wrong, Jan? asked Philip. Are you sick or something? Jan looked a bit hesitant. I'm not going to play with you guys at that old ballpark any more, she said. We can play here if you'd like, or at one of your houses. The two boys looked amazed. But that is the best place to play, the boys said. You know that, Jan. Jan began to look afraid now. I'm not going, she shouted. Not any more. Let's go without her, said Alex. We don't need her. We can play just the two of us. But Philip knew it would be much harder to play hide-and-seek with only two people, especially back in that old ballpark. Why won't you come with us? Philip asked. Well, she said, my grandpa was telling me about Chavis Cravis. Who's Chavis Cravis? Philip asked. Grandpa said, there used to be an old hermit who lived on the outskirts of town when he was a boy, named Chavis Cravis. He said the hermit used to come into town and offer chestnuts to children. If they accepted, then he would take them back to his house in the woods. Grandpa said that once the townspeople found that out, they found Chavis Cravis. Grandpa remembers his parents talking about children were found all over the hermit's house, and he had wigs made out of their hair. They even found some kids still alive, trapped in cages. When our parents were young, they were told that if they misbehaved, then Chavis Cravis might come, and their parents could give them to him. Alex was smiling in amusement. So? he asked. Jan looked at him sternly. Grandpa told me to stay far away from that old ball field, because that is near where Chavis Cravis used to live. Your grandpa's just crazy, Alex said. Everyone knows that, and you're a baby for believing him. Fine, she said, but I'm not going. Good, said Alex. Let's go, Philip. But Philip didn't move right away, and he looked pale. But Alex grabbed him by the arm, and the two boys went to the ballpark. By the time the sun was setting that day, the two boys were having such a fun time playing hide-and-seek that they had completely forgot about what Jan had told them about the old hermit who once lived there. Let's play one more time before going home, Alex said. Sure, said Philip. I'll hide so well this time, you'll never find me. So Alex started counting, and Philip ran to find a place to hide. Some time passed, and Alex still had not found Philip's hiding place. He looked in all the usual places, but Philip wasn't there. After a while, it began to get dark, and Alex started calling to Philip to come out. It was time to leave, but Philip didn't answer. Soon the sun was almost down, and Alex began to feel frightened. The trees and rocks took on different forms in the darkness, and the ball field began to feel foreign to him. At the top of his lungs he called out again as loud as he could, but there was still no answer from Philip. Finally, Alex decided that Philip was not here, and he turned to run home, but instead ran right smack into a man who had been standing right behind him. The man grabbed his arm with scaly, bony fingers. Alex stared into the man's eerie face in horror. The man smiled. I have a chestnut for you, boy. <laughs> I have many more for you. Alex ah! screamed and broke free of the man's grasp. He then ran as fast as his lungs could manage all the way home, never looking back. 
Some years have passed, and neither Alex or Jan ever returned to that old ballpark near the woods. And Philip has never been found. Isn't that something? Oh.